Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Real Talk with Coach Sherry. And today I wanna talk about how I did not have my first real Valentine's Day until I was 32, maybe 33 years old. Oh my goodness. Yes, so we are post Valentine's Day. Valentine's was on Friday and I had not had my first real official Valentine's Day until I was about 32 or 33 years old. And by then I had been married for about seven or eight years. And you're probably wondering, what? Why did it take you so long to have a Valentine's Day? Not saying I didn't have a Valentine all those years. It's just that I had not been able to fully enjoy a, a real Valentine's Day where, you know, I didn't have to do anything. I could be pampered for the entire day or do whatever my heart's desire for that day. And the reason why it took me that long to have an official Valentine's Day is because I grew up in a brick and mortar business that my parents owned and operated for 40 years. And that business was a flower shop. Yes, my parents had two flower shops in Northern New Jersey. And if you know anything about the flower business, you have to know that on Valentine's Day, oh my goodness, it is extremely busy. And even though I went away to college, my college was three hours away, I still came home for Valentine's Day to help in the business. I would often bring friends home with me that needed extra money because you know how college students are, you always can use extra money. So I would bring friends home to work. I would have friends that you know I grew up with, friends that I hung out with that would work it was all hands on deck for Valentine's Day, especially if it landed on a weekday because you know how us ladies are. We want what we want when we want it. So it's not about getting your flowers the day before Valentine's Day or the day after you want your flowers on Valentine's Day. So on Valentine's Day around that time, we would have to hire additional drivers, additional sales consultants, and additional designers to to design the flower arrangements, you know, the roses, the dozens of roses that were being ordered for people's loved ones. And even my my husband, who even at the time when he was just my boyfriend, because, you know, February 14th in the football arena of things um, for the NFL, they aren't working. I mean, he was still working out, but they, he didn't have to prepare for any games or anything like that. So even he would be working at the flower shop. So he would really just do the calls. He would um, filter phone calls and answer the calls and, you know, talk to those people who had many, many women and had to order multiple, multiple roses. Um, the people who were long-winded, the people who didn't know what they wanted, those are the people that my husband, my boyfriend at the time would talk to. And then even when I got married, and when I got married, we lived everywhere, LA, St. Louis, New Orleans, Charlotte, and I would come home for Valentine's Day to help my family. It didn't matter how much money my husband made, how much money we made, what kind of businesses we had going on, I would always stop everything and go home, fly home to help my family. Even when I had children, <laughs> when I started having kids, I would bring my kids home. And at that point, I would allow my mother to come and stay stay home. And I would go in her place and work. And she would stay home with the kids. Now, I'm not sure who got the better end of that deal. But no, my kids were great. Um, but she would stay and watch the kids, which was great for me. Um, gave her time to bond because she didn't get to see my kids a lot at that time because we always lived so far away. It wasn't until I had my third child and maybe a year or two after that, that um, I stopped really going up there as much. And then eventually my parents retired from the business, left it to my brothers and moved to Virginia. So, um, you know, that kind of changed the dynamics of things. You know, it was, it was interesting, but yeah. So once I stopped really going back and forth to the flower shop for Valentine's Day, it was weird. You know, I didn't really know what to do for Valentine's Day because 
I'm the type of person, especially maybe, well, probably because I did grow up in the flower business. Um, I'm not the type of person that wants big, big, lavish things for special occasions, like for my birthday, Valentine's Day, um, my anniversary or Christmas. You know, I, I'm I'm the type of person that I want things laced throughout the year you know show your appreciation every day um don't just wait for that one big day and i think that's because i worked with a lot of clients that had to have those you know get me at the dog doghouse type gifts or you know i'm gonna show her how much i love her on this one day of the year type of gifts and i was never into that i'm like why can't you do this all the time or just random you know just spur of the moment not when it's kind of dictated to you to do so so i'm not knocking people that go all out for valentine's day or anything like that but i'm just saying me and my preference you know um so so yeah so now i'm 50 so um, I want to say, let's say 32, 33, I started having my, my first real Valentine's. And even now, it's just, you know, it becomes consumed with kids. So this past Friday, which was Valentine's Day, my youngest daughter, or my youngest of three, she um, had a basketball game. <laughs> and the basketball game went for a long time. It, it was a long game. So, um, and it was kind of far from where we live. So, once again, you know, not a real Valentine's Day, but it's not anything that I concern myself with because I know that I am loved and appreciated. Oh, there goes the lights. Oh yeah, right. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> my backlight. I have to. Get, I have to get a real um, ring light for my phone. I don't know why I do it like this, but. At any rate, yeah, I hope you all had a great Valentine's Day. I hope you were able to spend it with the one or the ones that you love and that you got everything that you ever wanted for your Valentine. Um, just know that love is love and I hope that you're able to show that same kind of love, bring that same fire every day to the one that you love because that's very important. Um, yeah, love is in the air. <laughs> but owning a flower shop is not for the weak at heart. It is a really, really tough business. So many people don't get it. You know, I just remember when we would have those those holidays like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. Um, and then we had a lot of Jewish holidays like Passover and Hanukkah, Yom Kippur. Um, it was so busy. And literally, we would have to have all hands on deck and our hours... I remember, you know, getting off at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, just preparing for the big holiday rush, Mother's Day especially, because everyone has a mother or someone who's been like a mother to them. And so they want to give them their flowers while they are alive, and I'm not mad at that. And so it, it used to be crazy. And, you know, being a young person, I still love to go out, so... I remember, especially around Mother's Day, I had a really good friend who I would give her some money and she would go out and buy my mother a gift. If we were going to go out that Saturday before before Mother's Day, she would buy me an outfit. <laughs> I'd give her the money. She'd buy me an outfit because I wouldn't have time to do any of those things. And because I was young, yeah, I was able to still work all day up until midnight, one o'clock and still go out and still wake up to be back at the shop at like six, seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. I would be so tired, but I was young, didn't have kids, didn't have a care in the world. So that was the time that I could do it. And it's funny when I see young people nowadays that, you know, always talk about how tired they were. And really all they did the night before was probably play video games or something like that, because there's really not a lot of places for them to hang out. I mean, I used to go to New York, to Bentley's. I don't know if any of you are from New York, but Bentley's or hang out in Harlem and just, just hang out. And it was a good, good, clean fun. It was good times. Um, so when I hear young people say, I'm so tired, I'm like, what did you do last night? Oh, I was up late playing video games. I'm like, what? That's... 
that's crazy or they're so tired they act like they can't ever get any sleep and i'm like if you don't have any kids you could just go home and go to sleep so you could just bear these eight hours and get it in but you know they don't make young people the way they used to <laughs> so let me know when did you first have your first valentine and what was it like um did you enjoy it do you did you build on it now that you're older or your valentine's days you know amazing over the top what are they like I really want to know. I'm curious now. But um, just make every day a Valentine's Day. And don't forget to tell the ones you love that you do love them and appreciate them. You know, time is short. It's, tomorrow's not promised to anyone. You know, I always say none of us are going to get out of this one alive. So you just have to make the most of it while you can. Um, I have a lot of things I want to share with you, but I'm not going to put them all in this video because they're not all related. But... Um, I'll be back. You know that. But I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and for rocking with me, for being part of this team and all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers. You guys, I made over a hundred subscribers. That is amazing. A hundred. I think it's a, I'm at 120 new members of this team. So thank you for rocking with me. And I just want to bring you some great content um, that is going to provide you with a nugget or two that you can take along with you and add value to your life. So, you know, today's nugget, I hope, is just for you to understand, especially if you are in an industry like a flower industry or, you know, a high consumer industry like that, to know it is hard work. It's a lot of work. Um, and I feel your pain. I feel you. Um, you know, your grind is hard. Um, but it's rewarding because if, especially in the flower business, you're beautifying someone's life. You know, um, my parents did amazing work. My father was a master florist and they did, you know, celebrity stuff. And it was just, it was popping. They, they were the joint. So I'm very proud of all the work they've done. So at any rate, you guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. And until next time, I want you to stay safe. And remember, this has been Real Talk with Coach Sherry.